Okay, uh, welcome to the final episode of Mass Effect 2. And then we can move on to Mass Effect 3. I'm on the roll today. I got nothing better to do. It's still just like too wet and too cold from the snow to go biking, so... I'm uh, doing this. And... I should be done soon. I'm not sure if all of these will be posted on Wednesday or not. Uh, it depends on uh, how long my computer takes to make the files. But, uh, yeah, enjoy. I don't know if I'll go straight into doing commentaries. I, I know I'll be posting this week uh, episodes for Mass Effect 3, but I don't know if I'll be going straight into doing commentaries on that or not, because uh, sometimes I like to give myself like a week to, you know, think about that game and only that game. And bless, I'm I'm waiting for uh, I'm waiting for something to come in. Um, the mail, um, the um, to uh, make keeping track of things in that game. And I'll explain to you uh, in Mass Effect 3 why there are certain parts of that game that there are certain parts of that game that are hard to keep uh, track of. And I'll and I'll explain to you about all the mods and everything, which, uh, by the way, once you see my Mass Effect free play, um, uh, the video that I've gotten the most positive response is the one where I explain to people how to um, disable the Windows Media Player looking for a network sort of, you know, glitch thing on Windows 7. And people seem to respond to that, so I guess, I, so I guess I'm pretty decent at doing how-to videos, and I've been thinking about doing some more of them. Uh, if you'd like to see more how-to videos from me, um, leave a note in one of the comments. Um, for instance, I'm considering doing uh, things about how to, for instance, put a video capture card in your computer, how to put in a new disk drive. Most of this stuff is easy for most people, but um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, I figure um, there's somebody. There's always going to be somebody who will be like me, you know, completely new to it when I started and having to figure it out for our own. Maybe, um, maybe that, maybe that will help. One of the things I was thinking of doing was um, showy because um, it's actually quite simple once you memorize the steps, but and get the programs, but it can seem intimidating. When I first saw the instructions printed, it really intimidated me. The instructions for printing, for uh, modding Mass Effect Free. And I don't know, will that get pulled by YouTube? I don't know, I can take a chance. Um, I'm not making a profit after all, so uh, I, these aren't monetized in any way. I don't make any money off of this. I just do this because I enjoy video editing. And uh, yeah, uh, I see the videos get one to two viewers a piece. So there's obviously, and it's not me, so uh, there's obviously one person out there maybe who uh, likes my videos so whoever you are yeah um i strongly believe that hey if you have an if you have just one person who's enjoying something you're doing and uh you like doing it then uh go ahead and do it i'm not doing it as my livelihood i'm still i'm still looking for work but it's kind of hard to find when you can't drive a car in my area and you don't have high speed internet where you live it's kind of hard to uh go to college or anything like that so um but, um, but I do enjoy this, so, um, yeah, it's not a bird or anything, but, so, uh, yeah, I hope somebody out there enjoys this, but, um, if you'd like me to make a video, like, on how to mod Mass Effect 3, or how to, um, edit your save files in this game, so you don't have to worry about mineral scanning, I, I did one of those for the Xbox 360 version, and, uh, if you'd like to, uh, see, or if you'd like to see me, uh, you know, uh, show you, uh, how to, uh, clean a, uh, PS2. Uh, I recently cleaned out my brother's PS2 and took, he, he thought, uh, we both thought that his PS2 had just, was just done for it. It's hardware had just died, but I, uh, got it cleaned out and it works, uh, tire. Yeah. Let me know. But anyway, enough talking about future projects. Um, here we are. This is acquiring the Reaper IFF, which you get a chance to do way earlier in the game. But don't do it there. Then, uh, if you want to, uh, if you want every, if you want to get as many people out alive as you can from this suicide mission, 
don't do it. Also, this is probably my most hated mission in the game. In fact, up until a certain mission in Mass Effect 3, which I'll talk about when I get there, don't worry, this is my most hated mission in the whole Mass Effect series. And, I, and yeah, I don't hate a lot in this series. That's the thing, is even the things that are bad are bad in that I, in that I feel disappointed that they didn't do better. And, I, and I'm disappointed that, you know, it's clear EA made them rush it, or if it was some sort of internal office politics. It, see, it feels like... Uh, it feels like, for instance, with the ending, Casey Hudson was trying to prove that he was a real writer when he didn't need to do that. He was doing okay jobs at others. He's doing fine doing other things. Everybody was respecting him. It wasn't like it. But, yeah, I, I like having these two with me because Grunt is good at smashing his way through husks and Tally, of course, her um, drone distracts them. And apart for those giant guys who have, like, um multiple humans, I think, uh, m you know, mesh together in, like, some sort of abomination sort of thing, um, I mean, this is, um, that's all you fight, um, and, uh, this is a good creepy level, but they need me to be able to believe, it's like the same with zombies, I have a hard time believing zombies could, uh, could, uh, defeat a heart, uh, a trained military in modern body armor or something, because they'd have to fight through it and stuff. Here, these guys, all they do is, like, slap you around. All they do is, like, slap you. I mean, these guys, they sort of jump on you a little more, I guess. In Mass Effect 3, all they do is, you know, like, give you, like, Neh! slaps. I'll talk about that later, but still, all you have to do is keep backing up and shooting. Backing up and shooting. And there's always room to do that. Even if you get, um, uh, even if you get um, trapped against something, you, uh, you still have a good chance of making it out alive, so, and, to me, they don't act like they have brains, they just sort of rush at you, and what's more, it, they're the most obvious enemy that attacks in waves, and that, you know, it's obvious that you're playing a game, it sort of, like, kills my immersion when, um, enemies come at you at waves, you eliminate one wave, and then at the exact same place, when you take a step right down, back down into the same place, another wave comes up from the exact same area, they don't all attack you at once, or they don't come from even a slightly different direction, that, that sort of kills my immersion. The rest of this is very creepy, and it actually introduces a really good character, and a favorite character of mine, and one I would have put in the credits, except that he's only in this one part, so I didn't have a clip of him, and I was like... You know, I'm just going to have to put him as a guest star on that episode when, when I get to him. Because uh, even when I was putting this together, I realized, oh, he's only going to be in one or two episodes. You see right there, I had to shoot like three waves of husks between these two. And that's all it was, was shooting a bunch of husks. And it's like, why? Why? And DC Douglas, I don't mean any disrespect to you. I really uh, respect your uh, acting chops. Everyone here, you know, you do a good job. Even Male Shepard... Uh, a voice acting got way better between between Mass Effects 1 and 2 to the point where uh, I think it's just a matter of personal preference um, where I think it's just a matter of personal preference in this and Mass Effect 3 it's not it's no longer uh, you choosing between uh, playing the default and playing your gender so you can uh, so, that it, so that you can romance Ashley or if you just and here's the thing, I don't think it's sexism, really, if you're, um, maybe it's just my neurological things, but playing video games where you play as a, play as a girl or a, um, always sort of made me feel a little weird when I was a kid. I don't know. I don't know. It, it was always like a little, I don't know, I, I just found it hard to relate. Not that there aren't female characters that I like. Of course there are, and there always have been. It's not like I... But it's like... And no, I don't think of women as nothing but sex objects. It's just like I've always had trouble relating to that. But then again, I used to have trouble playing video games, period, or playing things, you know, with my friends like the Lone Ranger or something where I was pretending to be somebody I wasn't. I... I don't know, I just felt like I was kind of losing my identity or something. I don't know. 
That's probably just ang and uh, having an anxiety disorder. Gen Yeah. Yeah, so you shoot the ton past, so yeah, as you can see, that's all you do, is shoot past a ton of those things, and then... Yeah, they just left it sitting out here, and the guys who were trying to stop you from getting it didn't think to, I don't know, smash it while they were here. Oh well. But yeah, each individual part of this was so short, it was like, um, you know what, turning it into its own episode, you know, is just like, into two short episodes. To, to me, I rarely stop. Once I get to the Reaper IFF point anyway, when I'm playing the game, I rarely take a break and, you know, go away. You know, you then shoot a bunch of guys, shoot the core, and then grab this guy. Yeah, as you can see, it sort of edits together pretty nicely, I thought. I thought it sort of edits together nicely, and you don't feel like you're missing anything from this. I mean, I think the way it plays without my commentary, if you've never played this before, it just looks like Legion did. It looks like I'm uh, getting ahead of myself. Spoilers, but it looks like the Geth did something that um he so that that was causing that took down the barriers and everything. You've got the IFF, so there's no reason that Shepard and the rest of them would have to. Looks like he took down the Degenerator. I mean, he did hack it, and then he got attacked, all right? If I were reading that on my own, I don't think it's confusing. If it was, if you did watch this for the first, if you are if you are unfamiliar with Na Mass Effect and my Let's Plays or your first exposure, I can't imagine that's true. But if it were, um, did you, if you found it confusing, uh, let me know, but I don't think anybody would find it confusing. We need better equipment to fight the Reapers. An intact Geth would be invaluable to Cerberus's cyber weapons division. Uh, no. I've seen aliens, and I've, and what's more, uh, I've, and what's more, uh, do you forget, uh, Tally's loyalty mission, you know, just a few hours of game, you know, just a, well, it's a long time ago on this. I mean, I'm assuming this takes place over a period of months, realistically. I'm just saying. That it took forever. I'm just saying, upgrading the ship, get everything, and doing all this other stuff, and finding out, and finding all these clues, and recruiting all these people. I, I, I'm assuming that I have a timeline in my head, and I don't want to mess with it. Here, here's the great thing about Mass Effect. Here's why I don't read any of the novels or comics, no matter how well written they are, or um, watch the movies. Is that you know, each time I play through it, I'm creating my own canon in my head. My own justifications for what Shepard's doing. And I tend to base what decisions I make, just not just on what I think would be fun, even though that is the point of the game, but on what, as some as a, somebody, as a co-writer of the story. That, that That's what this game does better than anybody el anyone else. That's what Bioware's games do better than anywhere else is they don't make you feel you're not in the in a vast world just exploring it like in Skyrim or a Fallout but you do feel like you're in a very focused story you feel like you're in a focused epic story um that um all you need and uh and that and that you're co-writing it with the writers I mean, you're deciding what his background is. You're deciding what it, who his love interests are, and I make all those I make all those decisions based on um, the first two decisions, which is his background, which is his background, and uh, whether he's a soldier, what type of per, you know, whether he's a biotic or something. Yeah. But yeah, before you do anything here, you'll want to go uh, talk to to the Geth. And he'll be behind Medbay, which, why they're keeping him, if they're afraid of his hacking ability, why are they keeping him physically close to the AI core? Couldn't they keep him in the airlocks that if he tries every anything and then shut off all wireless uh, access, and then if he tries anything, you can just uh, eject it? Although, why everybody's afraid when you've shot hundreds of these things, and this one is in, is in pieces, I don't know. But yeah, here's the last member of your squad you recruit. Right before the end of the game. Which, yeah. I think after 
seen this, you'll you'll understand when I talk when I do my uh, talk of Mass Effect Free, just why it wasn't just the end of the game. Why from the be very beginning of the game it felt sort of wrong. But uh, yeah, I'll show you here. I'll show you, but um. going to attack me? No. Every Geth I met before you tried to blow my head off. We have not met. No, you and I have. But I've met other Geth. And I profile this very discriminately. With extreme prejudice. You seem to know an awful lot about me. Just what you keep posting on your Facebook profile. You watch me or you watch organics? Yes. I hate this. Which? Thank you for nailing him down to an answer. <laughs> that's gotta be the only time that's ever happened in science fiction. Normally the hero just accepts the vague answer from the mysterious guy and doesn't and doesn't press him for uh you know, no, be specific. I'm not accept. I'm not accepting those partial answers. They they don't accept those on. They don't accept those on, t at te on in tests at school. They they make you write out the full answer and make it clear what you're saying. Clarify your terms, or however they put it. I'm trying to remember what what you're told to do in school when you. Yeah, but you're but you're supposed to write in complete sentences and answer the question asked. Clearly. Ours. Will anyone else be affected by whatever it is you're doing? If they involve themselves, they will. Um, yeah, um, that... Are the Reapers a threat to you, too? Yes. Why would they attack other machines? We are different from them, outside their plans. So, you aren't allied with the Reapers? <laughs> nope. We oppose the heretics. Have you seen those guys? They're just basically giant hands in space. I'm not going with that. Are you asking to join us? Yes. Thankfully, they don't put him through the whole Pinocchio data thing of wanting to be human. They let they let him be his own thing, which what is the individual in front of me called? Is fine because this sort of thing of coming from a collective and then. Do it. It was already done in um, Star Trek Voyager. One of the few things that show did right was was the way it was the way it treated Seven of Nine. I mean, most of the time, it's they still had their cringeworthy episodes, but most of the time they did. That was like the one thing they did right was uh, Seven of Nine's plot arc. Ah, uh, dark. Did we? Shepard, how can I help? Yeah, this is your last chance to talk, and I'll just let you hear because this in its full glory. Uh, send kids out of a room if you, if they're in the room. Past relationship with Talizora makes dalliance attractive as stress release. Still recommend caution. Quarry an immune system weak could kill her. Oh, when you put it that way, this doesn't seem like a good idea at all. Recommend you self sterilize as well. Oral contact with tissue dangerous. Take precautions. Also, forwarding advice booklet to your quarters. Valuable diagrams, positions. Where did you find this? Species, erogenous zone overview. Please Testify tell me this isn't on Kindle. To reduce discomfort. Gave ED electronic relationship aid demonstration vids to use as necessary. Please tell me you didn't do that. You're just yanking me around. That AI doesn't know the meaning of a word. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's your last uh, conversation with him. Because you have to go up there. There's this annoying thing where to get his loyalty mission, you have to go up there so that it will click in that he wants to talk to you again. And then you you uh, you talk, you talk come back down here to talk to him. Just You would call it a virus, but we call it a... Back to you, Pahuas. 
see ya. Night light. Broken tiddlywink. Slide. Rule. Headphone. Bowl. We're thinking of going with the term virus as well. <laughs> so, the virus would give all Geth the heretics' logic, and all Geth would then go to war with organics. Yes. Geth ah, shoot. The the no ah, this is going to come. This is. This is one of those big decisions only I'm qualified to make, isn't it? I thought Geth couldn't be hacked or get viruses, at least for more than a few seconds. Yeah, but uh, we uh, uh, we've been really sloppy about it. updating AVG. Sorry. We probably should check these equations with a calculator before. Uh, before just accepting them, since they can have such a huge impact on us. Released, how quickly would this virus spread through your people? We are networked via FTL com release. Most would change within a day. Isolated. Uh, I guess since you're sentient, putting a note somewhere saying, uh, "Don't trust anything that comes with that that where the fault process gets traced back to uh, to coming back with this an with an equation coming back with this answer." Uh, I guess that's out of the question. should we expect in space none with them mobile platforms of various configuration and non sentient defense turrets. you know the the I'm sort of get. stuff you've been shooting since uh since eating prime it shouldn't be a problem all right well that sounds easy enough they built stations in the terminus where is this thing Stars. Well, yeah, technically Earth. everything is between well, stars, so, uh, um, you want to be a little more specific? All you've given me is a system and say that it's between stars. That really narrows it down. <sighs> you know space is big, right? Yeah, like that hole in your chest. Hey, you want me to send somebody there to patch it up? <laughs> I won't let them brainwash your race, especially not to worship Reapers. You have my word on that. We will begin preparations. Okay, so you go here. No. You know, it's just our heat emissions that are hidden, right? They could look out a window and see us coming. Windows are structural weaknesses. Yeah, do not use them. Approach the hull and these coordinates. Security cameras? Access anything? Really? Wow. So, these heretics, they have to have known for at least two years, you know, since the Normandy turned up on Eden Prime in the first game, that we have an ability to to mask our heat signatures in space they're just they're just lucky humans are humans and turians and especially seem to be so incompetent that they'll have this super tech that uh eve that uh based on this and they have these super stealth ships that yeah i know they can only be built at this size according to the game okay fine but, um, but, uh, according to this and the evidence that we see in Mass Effect 3, these ships can't be detected even by Reaper tech. So I have to wonder, you know, how incompetent do you have to be to not just build tons of these ships? That these super stealth ships that can't be detected, just get up point blank with your enemy and then just start blasting them until they die. I like that they give you a choice, but I I, I go with uh, I go with destroy because it seems like because brainwashing some brainwashing someone does I don't know that just doesn't seem uh, you know right now there are enemies by their choice so uh, 
killing them is total is completely just is completely morally justifiable whereas brainwashing them doesn't seem um this is new data we have not yet reached consensus brainwashing them just thus doesn't seem right to me this isn't the time to debate let's move while the heretics are distracted Add to these hubs these are mobile platforms yeah yeah shoot a bunch of gaff that's all I didn't think it was necessary to keep in all the, uh... The sneaking around is really the dumbest thing I've ever seen in the game. The dumbest self-stealth section. They just have these giant light-up patterns on the floor. So as long as you stay on the other side of the floor, other than the title tiles that are lit up, and you're not a complete clutch, you're never going to set them off, and you're always going to get the surprise. But, but once you come up to a certain point with a locked door, you have to fight every Geth in the room anyway. So there really is no point. You're not sneaking past them, going out the door, and then uh, leaving them. You, you have to kill them all anyway. So, so uh, not waking them up, uh, it doesn't really matter. So uh, I don't really care. And it doesn't cause any more Geth to come in. You would think that would mean that the whole ship would be woken up or something, but nope. The uh, alarms are isolated to the room you're in, so, uh... Every other species I know of might be psychologically scarred by a traumatic experience like that. Yeah, another reason why rewriting doesn't sound like a good idea. It sounds like it would be doing a lot of mind-rapey things to a lot of innocent people. He said they could, that they're programs. Even you know that. You explained that to me the, in the last game, Tally. Uh, or did they just have somebody... Or did they just want somebody other than Shepard to ask a stupid question for once? Really? Well, then why did you end up, uh, well, then why are you fighting now? We understood their reasons. We allowed it. There was peace between us. The heretics were biding their time, waiting for an opportunity to attack you. If they reached this judgment before they left, we would have heard it in their thoughts. How could we have become so different? Why can we no longer understand each other? What did we do wrong? The flip side of freedom is responsibility. They made a bad choice. Let them own it. You're not responsible for their decisions. Thank you. I'm sick of all these. A lot of times in modern TV shows and movies, if you notice, the uh, hero always takes the blame. It's always somehow the hero's fault that the villain is there doing things. It's like Batman wanting to stop organized crime in the new, in the latest Batman movies. The one thing I didn't like was the uh, was. The one thing I didn't like about the Dark Knight was it seems to take this stance that, oh, if Batman wasn't there, then the Joker wouldn't exist, so this is all Batman's fault. And it's like, no! The Joker is some nut job. We don't know why he's there or anything, or even how long he's been around, but it seems to have been, it seems to have been at least a year since Gordon gave Batman that, you know, playing card from that double homicide in the Dark Knight. And it's like, no, the the Batman isn't responsible for what Joker did. Batman did his best to, to take down all these petty criminals. There was no law that said that somebody else had to step up and just... Uh, so you just hold up a bunch of gaff and, uh, you know, that. But there's no law that says that, that um, the Joker wasn't forced to become the Joker by Batman. So yeah, uh, I don't like this. So uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for making it an option to say no. It's not it's not your fault for trying to help people. Helping pe people who harm other people do it because they are bad people. 
it's not the fault of anyone who tries to help other people that they do it. Oh, yeah, no. There is a non zero probability of error. Then blow them up. We yeah. Have a to uh, yeah, let's let's wait. just get Atomic. rid of this problem. Collapsing antimatter magnetic bombing mechanisms. Done. Recommend withdrawal to Normandy. So, yeah, now you have to run through here in three minutes, and that's what I saved my heavy ammo for on this mission. After you shoot all those gaff, yeah. And it goes right into a cutscene from here. And that's the other thing, is context. You go past anything that could act as cover, and since the button for run is the same as the button for cover, when you're trying to get out of here, when you're trying to get out of here quickly, uh, it'll sometimes, uh, you know, detect the... They'll sometimes detect you as wanting cover, and I'll be like, "No, I was running, you idiot! There wasn't any in it. There weren't any enemies anywhere near there, and I don't need to recharge my shield." Yep. Well, there it goes. Now this is where you need cover because you got way too many big guys. I mean, you have these Geth troopers. You got a Geth Prime. You got everything all between you and your ship. Which, why they weren't trying to get into the Normandy, I have no idea. If they're such hackers that, um... They're such expert hackers that they were worried about bringing a Geth on board because they would, uh... Get into ED. I have to wonder, uh... I have to wonder, uh... Why we weren't worried about them hacking into ED here. But, yep, you just get in there and go! And there's the last of the loyalty missions and the last of your squad mates collected. So now all you have to do is bring the IFF online and then uh, we can go. And Ah, uh, here's the second of the crew disputes you have to fall. No reason to take the, uh, to take the uh, IFF mission as the last in the game. So that your uh, Paragon and Renegade points would be all the way uh, up. that for for my Mass Effect free let's play. Let's just say this decision and what you say at Tally's trial. Again, another indication the game was rushed. I have no impact, so again, it takes me right out of the game. And anything that takes me out of the game like this, it's like you don't have a large world that I'm exploring at my leisure like Skyrim, so the way you compete is by making me feel more connected with the characters. I feel more connected with the characters in this and with my decisions than I do in Skyrim. So when you abandon that, to me, that's a huge uh, mistake. Uh, and here's the one part point in the game where I feel, or again, in this game, I feel a little disconnected from uh, what's going on. And uh, there's a section here where, um, better safe than sorry with this tech. We'll take the shuttle to this. Where you're, um. I'll make sure we're up and running when you get back. Yeah, this section here where you uh, control Joker. This is um, the w the one part, the one other part other than that cutscene with um, with um, Ashley uh, way back in the game where I feel a little disconnected because up until now everything is presented from Shepard's viewpoint, and then all of a sudden I'm get I'm getting it from different characters' viewpoints, and it just feels a little jarring. 
And uh, so, yeah. Narrative. For the narrative, it just it just feels a little jarring. So, um, that's just as that's so so it's it's not I'm not saying that it's bad or anything and uh, it is interesting to play as Joker for a little bit but I don't really but yeah I don't know I don't know what I would have done here I guess they did the only thing that could be done so I'm not gonna complain I'm not gonna say Oh, this was a betrayal or something like that. I'm not going to go on Mass Effect 3 ending. I'm just going to say that, um, I probably would have, I probably would have done this without. Yeah, that's a very good question. If you could save the Normandy, why didn't you do whatever you did? Daisy, Daisy, answer to me. That was actually the first song sung by a, uh, for, by a, by a computer with a experimental speech synthesizer back in the 80s. Back in the 60s, I mean. Back in the 60s. Oh, why did I say 80s? I meant 60s. Daisy Bell. That's why it was in, uh, that's why it was in, um, 2001 in the first place. Ah. So all of uh second then. Thanks. Odd that these ultra dangerous things don't just blow up the ships so Shepard has nowhere to return to, but whatever. I'm not gonna tell you how to do your super villaining. All I can tell you is that it would have been a lot easier for you if you had just, you know, blown up a ship. Did I leave this low ah darn it, sorry, I left the loading screen in. I forgot there were loading screens in this. It feels so seamless when you're playing it. I guess I forgot when I was doing the editing. Yeah, you look like you could really protect me. Um, I'm just gonna go here. You don't know what that. You don't know what the emergency H fuel cells are. Hydrogen fuel cells. You know, you don't know how the you don't know how the ships uh, well the ship works and you're piloting it. That makes me feel hot. Uh, why are all science fiction writers obsessed with pi? It's like the easy thing because you can just look it up online and it's always the same answer. So. You can just say, oh, I know, pi to 20 digits, and you can just look up, you can just Google pi to 20 digits. You don't have to actually know how to do the math yourself. That, that's, that's my, uh, because I notice it's only become a thing where science fiction is always, always, always talking about pi. In, like, the past few years since we got really good search engines, and I'm just wondering if it's because it's easy to look up on your smartphones. That's, that's my theory, anyway. As somebody who's really lazy myself, uh, I have to say that's what I'd do. Yeah. Oh, this isn't looking good. Looking good. Yeah, he's a real solid snake, this one. Activate the drive and I will open the air box as we accelerate. All hostiles will be killed. What? What about the crew? They are gone, Jeff. The uh, everybody's gone, Jeff. Everybody's gone. Shit. Not Presley. Everybody's gone. <laughs> yep, everybody's gone. Chalk was. 
Yes, everybody's gone, Jeff. Everybody's gone. Not... Not... Do not Donnelly. Yes, everybody's gone, Jeff. Everybody's gone. Everybody is gone, Jeff. If you know what that's from, uh, I guess a thousand bonus points to you. You know, beyond whatever you're getting for sitting through my horrifying voice on this, you know, worthless mic, you know, talking, you know, giving you my worthless thoughts on this uh, really old game. Uh, you know, couldn't they give him some crutches or something so that he doesn't risk breaking his leg every time he does have to walk in an emergency? Just saying. Or, you know, have wheelchairs stationed on, there, on each deck, have a wheelchair stationed on each deck of the ship. I mean, I know it probably wouldn't be right in there where he was, but, you know, that he could just pull out a wheelchair, you know, once he got everyone? to the hallway and then... You lost everyone and damn near lost the ship too? Hey! Know, this was, right, I, was I mean, why, why weren't you checking? I mean, you're supposed to be super smart, right? The harmful data in the collector drive was even more sophisticated than the black box reaper viruses I was given. You were given reaper viruses and you... How are you holding up? You hurt? What? There's a lot of empty chairs in here. We did everything we could, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Is the ship clean? We can't risk this happening again. So, yeah, if if you want to, you can save your crew that was just kidnapped, but you have to, um, but you have to go right away. They, they, they let you do one loyalty mission in case Legion's loyalty mission didn't come up before this. Um, but if you thought, but if Legion came up before it told you that the IFF was ready, then, um, you can, um. Sounds like we have everything you can go to right now, which is what I do. Yeah, that's why it's once I get to the Reaper IFF, I, I feel like I'm on a roll, Joker. so then I don't want to uh, stop. Aye, aye, Commander. Just punch up the galaxy map whenever you're ready. And this is why I think this has the best ending of all the Mass, Mass Effect games, because everything's been building up to this point. I mean, it was in Mass Effect 1, but here, um, and then all your decisions affect what's going to happen here, and then what you know of your crew actually affects what happens, because uh, as you go on, you have to select different members of your crew to lead, diff to perform different tasks, or lead different uh, parts of the mission. So, yeah. Oh yeah, here's the tally romance scene where they, I guess they didn't want to show too much of her. And... Normally, these are very PG-13, so, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure about the overall M rating of this game, to be honest. Not when you have a rating of E10+, you know, that's like, yeah. Not when E has gone from, like, a PG to a G or something, I guess, and E10+, plus to, like, a PG, and then T is, like, a PG-13. I mean... I just don't want to... I don't know. I don't know. I guess I, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm not. I'm not crying censorship over it getting an M rating. I. I'm just like. I feel like there should have been more blood, more everything. If this was gonna. If this was gonna be an M rated game. I mean, if I knew that I was making an M rated game, if I were the programmers. I mean. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. They want to make it. Yeah. And normally, I'd be like. Oh, Shepard. Yeah, you're sort of like coming off a little woozy, but you know, but it's like, this could kill her. I can't have blame her for uh, being a little cautious about this, but uh, yeah. Shepard, I wish I had more information for you. I don't like you heading through that relay blind. I, uh, but we don't have much choice. I'm not going alone. <laughs> What, what were you planning to do? If there's only one IFF, and the only way to get through this relay is with that IFF. So, uh, how on earth were you, were you ever going to say there anyone to a scout? Yeah, get that through your head.
Well, hey, you nearly got a you nearly got killed on Apocalypse. Now I think that uh, that uh, earned some major cred. Plus, uh, hey, you were on Babylon Five. How can I say no to working with you? Okay, my last Babylon Five joke. Let's make it happen. Sorry, but I love Babylon Five. So yeah, this is just perfect. The end of this game is, to me, the most perfect end any video game has ever had. Everything you do gameplay-wise builds up to this point. Everything has some impact. And yes, I know, once you figure it out, you can, um, you know how to game the system. But, like, the first, first two or three times you play this, and you're still fill it, figuring out the system, assuming you didn't use a strategy guide or anything like that, and you were going in completely blind like I was. It just feels incredible as you figure out one time after another how, how, how to get one person after another out alive and just the whole feeling of it just does such a good job of making you feel like you're a hero going up against impossible odds. But you, but, you know, but, it, but it, it doesn't feel like it's reduced the stakes or reduced the uh, enemies into just being punching bags for you and... Instead, it feels like, yeah, I took the time, I mined all those planets. Well, I don't anymore since I got the save editor. But, you know, for, but I'm talking about the first time you, I mind, the first time you get, you get the, you get things done right. I mined all the planets. I, I went on all the loyalty missions. I assigned the right people to the right teams in the right positions, which is critical. Otherwise, missions fail. And I used nothing more than my intuition based on them. I didn't use a walkthrough or anything. I just used my intuition based on the characters to do this. And I got it. And I, and, uh, and, uh, the first time you do that, you know, if you can't play this type of game, I understand. I, there are types of games I can't play or something, but... But yeah, when you see something like that, because the first time I went through, I didn't do any of that. I just did the main missions, went through the Omega-4 Relay, and then, you know, all through here, you're seeing people, you know, members of your crew die from getting, you know, shot and stuff from parts of the ship blowing up. But the first time you go through and get this, you're like, yeah, I did it nailed it and it's so satisfying and so this is my favorite ending of any video game ever and this is why i can't wait to get to it. it's because it feels like the perfect reward for doing it no matter what difficulty setting you play it on and i played it on the hardest difficulty setting once and uh you feel like i nailed it you know Oh no, it's an Oculus Rift. I, I don't want VR to be a part of the future. Sorry. I'm sorry, but I do not but I'll but I know. I I know I be I know I'll be insanely um I kinda wish I could go down to that cargo bay, um there. Oh well, maybe the next maybe the next game. Yep. It's just like the music and everything. I mean, this is perfectly orchestrated as a video, as video, you know, not just as cool video game music, but as music, period, to give you this, uh, I mean, I mean, it brings home the danger. I mean, you feel danger, but you also feel that a moment. You know what it reminds me of is there's this great moment in, um, in Matt Smith, who is my third favorite doctor after, um, after William Hartnell and Patrick Trollton, who, uh, there's this great moment where he's just, uh, where he's just, where he's just, like, at the end of his first season where he's just, where once he sees all the, he knows that he's been trapped by all his enemies, but he decides, but he decides the best move is to get them fighting, so he, so he just comes out there and says, hey, look! Yeah, you've had me trapped before, and guess what? You always die. You know, that's what this feels like, is it feels like, to me it makes me feel like the big hero who's like, you know, yes, I'm in an impossible situation, but look what I've gotten through before, you know? And it feels like the music is both bringing home the tension and also bringing home the, the uh, end of 
am bringing home home the the heroism of when you do accomplish this yeah you are you're a man it makes you feel like you're a man which i think was i think subconsciously that's what a lot of people's problem with mass effect free was was that it told us no you're not and I have no, I, I have no problem getting some of the air let out, you know, so, you know, and there should be things where it's, where it goes back and where, you know, the enemy is so powerful, you know, in the next game that, you know, Shepard isn't able to just take it out well, like, like he expect, like you would expect him to be able to or something. That's fine, but I think it so totally took that out that it's like, yeah, here it's like, yeah, I've done, you know, by this point in the game, you know, with mineral scanning, I've been playing for like 35 hours or something, you know, which isn't a, which isn't the longest, which is far from being the longest RPG I've ever played, but still, you know, I've done 35 hours, you know, with mineral scanning, which is the equivalent in this game of grinding. I mean, this is just so satisfying. And this is exactly what it is. After you put people through, you know, because a game isn't just something that you're playing. You know, in a game like this, it feels like you're you're uh, passing a test and you're having to figure things out and you're all this. And it's like, um, and this feels like a, you know, it feels like a reward if you get it done right. Oh, darn it. Ouch. Well, uh, maybe we shouldn't have let Deanna Troy pilot for a while. Affirmative action or no. How is that the Paragon option? That that would just make that would just make the whole crew depressed and less effective. So uh, why would that be the Paragon option? How long until the collectors find this landing zone? I do not detect an internal security network. How come evil guys are always stupid in that way? Why can't uh just for once I'd like to uh, counter villains who are you know competent and actually you know say even though we have what we think is an impenetrable barrier i'm still going to invest in some security cameras from walmart to uh to just to make sure so anyway yeah here here's what here's what goes on is you get to make your speeches which is great because you didn't get to make a speech earlier like in mass effect one one of my favorite moments of mass effect one was when you got to make your you know Kirk slash Picard slash, you know, Sheridan sort of speech, you know, big heroic speech that inspires your space crew to go out and get the bad guys. Notice the DLC characters are completely silent here. That means going through the heart of the station, right past this massive energy signature. That's the central chamber. How on earth do you know that? How do you know that? Do you have a tourism map I don't know about? I mean, I guess maybe it's the logical assumption. Or, you know, it could be there, or it could be the giant nuclear reactor or whatever that uh, powers this thing that will just vaporize your skin from your, just liquefy your skin when you walk in. Here, maybe we can send someone in through this ventilation shaft. Shaft! As as the uh, least useful character in the game, I volunteer. It's like it's like he's glad of that. It's like he's so it's like he's so happy to do that. It's like is Jacob's life just one? Is Jacob's life just horrible? Yeah, and this is what makes up the. I left this in because I wanted to show. Yeah, this is what it is. Every time you get a new job here, you have to you have to choose who will do it based on who you think would uh, have stand the best chance based on how you know them from playing with them on your squad and talking to them and knowing their background. My favorite... You've... They say this and yet, um, 
put it, and yet, and yet, a pair, and yet, every time I've, ch nobody's died every time I've put her in charge of the uh, second team, and since she is my second in command, I don't show um, him, but every time he makes it, every time he comes and says, you're doing something, that's, that means that the screen came up and I had to select someone. And yeah, the first time, I, uh, I did, I've never done this with a walkthrough, I've always just, uh, looked through it based on uh, what I knew of, uh, of the people and their experience. And I'm like, with Miranda being loyal to me and everybody else being loyal to me, I figure my loyalty, my vouching for Miranda, you know, will make everybody else, you know, since I'm saying she's in charge and everybody's loyal to me. They should, and since she is second in command, I assume she must have, have experience uh, commanding people in combat. Let's hit them where they live. And it's like, up. So, yeah, you just jump out. You just come out here, and then... And I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the combat here, except when people are giving you plot-critical information over the radio, because uh, you mostly just shoot a bunch of collectors. It's not a boring mission. No, as I said, this is my f favorite ending to every game, to any game ever, up to this point. I mean, I haven't found one that... This one didn't let me down at all. I didn't feel let down. I felt like I was, I felt like it was testing every skill I had learned. So yeah, Legion goes through these pipes because I figure Legion, not only is he a hacker, but as a gift, I figured he'd be less vulnerable to uh, thing, to uh, conditions like extreme heat or such. You know, extreme heat and stuff like that. So that's, so that's behind my logic there. So yeah, every time you get to one of these cutscenes, it is possible to lose a squad mate, and they're dead. They're dead, dead. So um, one every time you get past one of these checkpoints, and you realize that you may, you know, the first time you play, now now you pretty now you know I'm pretty com you know you're confident that you're gonna get it. You're you know how to do it. Now I'm confident. So yeah, that that loading screen I was gonna cut it, but it was less than you know two seconds. So I'm so I was like. Uh, uh, you know, getting it down to cut that, it was like, why, why bother? Take me much longer to cut it than it than I would save watching it. So yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry if that's lazy, but lazy is pretty much my uh, middle name at this point. Looks like one of the missing colonists. Yeah, you want to help them? Uh, do something? Hmm. They're sealed in to keep freshness. Huh, for best results, use before before October 2190. Interesting. Ah, great. Well, if I'd been asleep for, uh, that's probably what my morning breath would look like if I'd been asleep for, like, for several months. Yeah, this is how you save your crew. Ha! -ha. There you go, Kelly. And no, I'm not losing Chakwas. Come on, Miranda, hurry up. I'm gonna have her in game free. Doctor Chakwas, are you okay? Ugh. Wow. Ugh. Yep. Yeah. Thank God you got here in time. A few more seconds. That's the attitude of somebody who grew up with Star Trek and uh, who has read Horatio Ward below her. Those swarms of little robots that melted their bodies into gray liquid and pumped it through these tubes. How do you know all that? Yeah, could you see, actually see that? What are they doing with our genetic material? From your tube? I don't know. I'm just glad you got here before it happened to us. So are we. But we still have a job to do. We've done well so far. Let's hope we can finish the job. Joker, can you get a fix on our position? Roger that, Commander. All those tubes lead into the main control room right above you. The route is blocked by a security door, but there's another chamber that runs parallel to the one you're in. Well, I've been able to hack every security door so far. I'll be fine. What about biotics? Could 
we create a biotic field to keep them from getting That's the stupidest idea you've ever had. I think it may be possible. I wouldn't be able to protect Okay, I'll explain my logic as I meet make each uh squad um selection and it turns out my logic was right because i've tried different configurations after this and uh, it didn't and it doesn't always work out but um i choose samara because um she's the most experienced and i figure she'd be the most calm and if biotics are linked to like mental state if i've gotten her loyalty then i figure she's made peace with uh her life and she you know she's less likely to escort him back, I, um, I, uh, you know, to do lead the fire, again, Miranda, because she seems like she would be the most experienced at, le at doing this sort of co covert thing. How did you get them back up online without a crew? We can't afford to go back okay. Not now. You'll never make it without help. I'll send someone with you. And I, and I choose more. And uh, yeah, I, I missed it here, but I choose Morden because I figure his his time with the special task group plus his medical knowledge would help keep people alive. And that's the way it tends to work out. So yeah, you fight a bunch of guys with, uh, but you can't leave this bubble, Samara. Samara. So again, that's a nice, that's a neat little gameplay twist. Is that your mobility is limited and your cover, and just because you can see some ammo doesn't mean you can get it. Because if it's outside her bubble, you'll get you'll get swarmed by the by the seekers. Um, yeah, uh, not sure how to phrase how to phrase that where it would sound natural, but. Um, so that adds an interesting gameplay twist, but again, I didn't feel the need to show it all to you because, um, again, this is long enough as it is, you know. Twelve episodes and all but two being over an hour long, so, you know, all but three being over an hour long, so. I would have assigned Tally to uh, get the door open, but whatever. I would assume she was. Yeah, whoever is leading that fire team can get killed at, um, at this point. And sometimes they've been loyal, and I swear they've died. So I don't know uh, what the game calculates into it. But um, I'm glad it's. While it's mostly is just uh, they're loyal, they live that that simple. There seem to be some variations within it that I'm not 100% sure of. But since I don't like where I don't like reading walkthroughs, so uh, I uh, don't know know exactly what that. Is. Oh, and if you want my favorite ending of this, um. It's especially good if Miranda is the love interest. She is. That is an option to make her the love interest in the game. But um, choose her to go on your team and everybody else to stay back. But no matter who else you put on your team, and I always put Tally on it just because um, if you put take your love interest with you, it um, it guarantees that they'll live through it. Um, most of the time they live through it being back here, but um, that's what. But I can actually. But it actually feels more personal if they're with you. And uh, I take Miranda here pretty much every time because uh, something's coming up where I think you'll... That, that uh, feels really rewarding and it feels like you had a real impact on her character. It's like, it's like getting Jack to spare that guy who was sort of like a representation of herself, you know? Her broken self. You know, before she started learning that she could be more is the culmination of her story and then um to me the culmination of miranda's story comes uh is coming up what can you tell us what are they doing there aren't any new enemy types that's why i'm not bothering showing the most of the combat against them don't worry you'll you, the end boss battle is here and um Yeah, none of this will really come into play in Mass Effect 3, but, um, hints at some interesting possibilities that, uh, again, 
I think the real blame goes into EA creating inner political situations where programmers and writers seem to have gotten at odds with each other on Mass Effect in, within Bioware, and they rushed the game out the door. I mean, all the DLC for this, some of it excellent, was all being worked on at the same time as the game. Some of it released just months Nobody before Mass Effect 3, which is... Arrival was released, I think, just six months before Mass Effect 3, which is insane. They should have had... They should have... Here's my thing. You could do DLC if you want, but then make it a splinter small team on the DLC for Mass Effect 2. And also, for the last year of development, you need to focus your whole team. I think that's what this shows. They should have um, focused their whole team, because Mass Effect 3, it should have been even more satisfying than this ending. Whereas... This is the most satisfying ending, not only of the series, but of this, uh, and that's part of the problem, is that Mass Effect 3, um, and I feel like I'm doing something here, because it's an actual boss fight. Um, but enough about Mass Effect 3 and its ending, um, that's been corrected by fans, and, and, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's not really a thing I bother it, I just sometimes try to, uh, Pretty uninitiated. I know, I know a lot. I know there are a lot of initiated out there. At least people I've talked to who are only vaguely aware of Mass Effect, and the re the only thing they're aware of are, you know, the uh, are the scandal when they showed that there were sex scenes in it on the, the news. Even a, even though other games had had sex for a long time before this, but um, and the ending controversy sort of made them uh, aware so i kind of like to explain that no it wasn't just a bunch of people whining and no um most of us are satisfied i just count there's a fan-made ending that i count as the ending you can see it on my it's i don't think it's the latest version that's up there I, there's a new version that i'll get to that i'm getting to for the first time the latest version i'll be getting to for the first time when I get to the end of Mass Effect Free for my Let's Play, but wow, that's really flimsy. So it's set up like a, so it's set up like a bunch of, so it's set up like knickknacks in my uh, great aunt's house, basically, is what you're saying. It's ultimate threat to all survival. But yeah, there's an actual. And look, see, uh, I'm using all my knowledge of these guys and just... Yeah, you see, when you're right here with this music playing, tell me that this isn't sa satisfying. Tell me that this music doesn't make accomplishing a mission objective in a game e even more satisfying. I mean... And the fact that you're the one accomplishing it. It's not just a cutscene. This is how all games should end. Something like this. Something that uh, takes all your knowledge of the game up to that point, challenges it, makes you feel connected with the characters in the game, makes you feel like, you, you know, your knowledge of the characters that you've met up to this point, that the characters aren't just information dispensers, that they're, um... Yeah, as you can see, uh, my hand was, I don't know, uh, yeah, that's a perfect example of my normal aim just being a little slow. Because it's hard to tell with some of these guys here, but when you're shooting a stationary target, I think it shows, I think it's a good example of my movement disorder getting in the way. But, yeah, this is just so perfect, I have trouble coming up with things to say, and I really don't want to talk over it. But this is a commentary. I love shooting these guys as they're powering up. Once once you figure out that pattern and you have powerful enough weapons and ammo, it's like... Yeah. Uh, too... I needed to... Uh, I wish the shotgun didn't have to reload so often. Uh, can somebody answer this for me? I have no idea. I, I... I, um... I think she was about to say shoot the ejection tubes again, but it cut her off, thank goodness. Um, but, um, 
But yeah, I live in an area where there's lots of hunting, but I don't know anything about guns. My family doesn't own guns. Um, somebody who does, maybe answer me. Um, a shotgun built for combat. Um, how many rounds can you load into it? Because in video games, it's always like two or three, and I'm like, yeah, I know that you're supposedly trading power for, you know, amount of ammo, but, um, and, but that's all about balancing things for a game, which again, I'm not, I'm not, um, upset that they're balancing out things for a game. I'm just wondering if in real life, in combat, we really have a troops or somebody who's having to reload every two, sh two or three shots, and, uh, I was part of a team. Some of them gave their lives for this you know, in combat reload, in real life reloading and switching weapons is a lot slower than in a video game. Oh yeah, this is why I bring Miranda, because I love, uh, because this guy is unrepentantly insane. I mean, you're using him, but he's unrepentantly merciless to, to everyone, even fellow humans who don't, you know, it's like, like all racists, there are always going to be people who aren't, you know, enough on his, or not, aren't enough example of uh, what he thinks is pure for him. And the fact that Miranda is now able to stand up to him, you know, af if you do her loyalty mission and now she's able to stand up to him, uh, that feels like you had a real impact and showed her, no, there's another way to do things. It isn't just a bunch of self-interested people. And it isn't just about us. We have to work together if we're going to... And it's like, no, it's like... It's like here. It's like even if we were to convert to whatever brand of Islam, ISIS wanted us to. They, they. Uh, can you? Uh, it wouldn't take them long to find people who weren't Muslim, who weren't Muslim enough, and start and bring back and bring back the executions and the terrorism and everything. That wouldn't give us peace. Even if you believe peace is simply the lack of con armed conflict between armies and not. You know, the lack of, um, Do not let destroy the base. What? people getting, and not the lack of people killing people, period. Consider this my yeah! Shepherd, that makes this even more satisfying. That, that's why, this is so satisfying. And then just when you, and then, yeah, it's so satisfying. And just when you think you're into, uh... Okay, there is one thing that upsets me, and that is this end boss fight, there isn't actually a 10 minute timer on it. You can go as long as you want, it will just go. He says 10 minutes, but there isn't a 10 minute timer or anything. And yeah, again, save your heavy weapon ammo for his eyes. For some reason, normally I'm better at this boss fight than I am here. I mean, this is fairly typical of my movement disorder, but there, but for some reason I was going a little slower today. I don't know what it was. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, I accidentally selected that gun and uh, it has no ammo, but... Am I the only one who's re reminded of the M-Boss fight in uh, Star Fox and Star Fox 64 here? I'm not, I'm not, um... Not that that's not meant as a criticism, I'm just saying. Oh darn <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm supposed to look from that angle, because the uh game had Tally standing right up in the air. You have a jetpack there, Tally? Wanna share it with us? So you have to take out this Reaper larvae, which has which which thankfully keeps showing you its weak points. I guess that's because it's a baby reaper. It doesn't know better. Hey! Then again, all adult bosses in video games show you their weak points. So, uh... But again, this will make, uh, what? Okay, let's assume a rival. There was only one reaper coming through at the time you blew it up. This will still make number three on my kill list. And we've just proven that they can't reproduce without, um, without harvesting a whole race, which takes a long time. So, um, 
I don't know how many Reapers there are. There could be thousands or maybe even 10,000 or something. It depends on how many cycles there have been, but it would seem to me that um, with us taking out their plan that's always worked in the past and this, the Reapers would have to start, would have to be feeling a little worried right now, too. I mean... I mean, they have no wings to, uh... It's the only weapon I have really, any real ammo for, so I have to keep going with it, I guess. And then I have to risk, uh, getting hit by him to get ammo. I think I'm stuck here, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right, I got stuck. Not stuck on my cover. That's the sort of thing, you, you can't account for every instance of that. I don't hold that against the programmers or anything. I just wish there was a timer, because it feels like there should be. Oh well. Still, I guess it's like uh, Death Star in range in 15 seconds. Nobody holds that against Star Wars. Is it ironic that they can that they were controlling the Gaff and they were trying to control the Gaff and uh, I'm using a Gaff shotgun to take him out? Wow, who would have thought that would do the same damage as a heavy weapon? But whatever. Oh darn it! Oh no! Grabber, grabber! Yeah! Tension right up until the uh... yeah, and I'm talking about the first time you play this or any of it, you know, this tension right up until the end. If you have the ability, play this game. That's all I can say is, eh. and play the first one too. First time I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, did I not accomplish something and is everybody dead? I mean, the first time I saw that establishing shot from a second ago, I mean, and, uh, yeah. Kind of glad I put you in armor instead of cat suit now, aren't you, Miranda? <laughs> not sure the cat suit would have done anything for you there. Yeah, I've changed quite a bit. Their first plan, which never failed before, I caused to fail. They then tried their first backup plan. I caused that to fail. You're their second backup plan. I caused that to fail. I'd say I've accomplished quite a bit. You know, it's never a good thing when you're on backup plan number three. And... Backup plan number three, as we'll see in Mass Effect 3, is basically just brute force and nothing else. Joker, if you were in the pilot seat instead of stupidly sh shooting that gun because they thought it looked awesome for the guy with brittle bone disease to be up there shooting a gun, you'd, uh, who's flying the ship, please? Uh, you could have gotten the ship closer and I wouldn't risk falling to my death there. Just saying. It hasn't been 10 minutes. But, yeah. But if you're playing this for the first time, this just feels like... Whoa! And that's what makes these games so addictive. It's just the uh, sense of accomplishment. It does it better than any other game. Just the sense of accomplishment when you get into the end. The sense of reward. Because you care about the supporting characters. You care about their races. They're not just information machines. The races aren't just, ooh, alien races. Even though, you know, they kind of are. But, you know, you're like watching it. It's like, it's like, so you... So you feel like 
I just saved everyone, you know, it's just like. Yeah, and that's the other thing is, uh, whoops, I guess I missed this. Uh, I meant to cut this out, but that is a good point. Yeah, is that's the other thing that makes these games so addictive. Why they're not just, why I didn't just play them once and they're not just sitting, you know, in the back of a shelf where I can't find them collecting dust. Even Mass Effect Free, just so I feel like I'm getting the complete story. As much as many problems that they have with that game, which I'll get into, but don't worry, it won't be a complete bash fest when I get to Mass Effect Free. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm getting a lot of Don't try my patience. I don't mind if I do. You must come over and try mine sometime. Do you mind if I don't smoke? Human dominance or just Cerberus? And why would I want human dominance anyway? Uh, we seem to be a minority in this galaxy. Um, I mean, I know we're. I know it's a bit. Ti I know the odds are tipped a bit. You know, against us right now. You know, but but I. But I wouldn't. You can fall in line or step aside, but don't get in my way. But you know. Having humans dominate everything seems a step too far in the other direction, so, um... I'm surprised he didn't have a way to remotely take over Edie and, uh... Take over him. Well... Well, there goes two years of my life. What do I do next? Just stare at this blue giant dwarf thing or whatever? Or he probably just has color filters, because if he was really looking at, at a sun like that, he'd be blind. Although, I don't know what those things, those implants in his eyes do, so, um... Is that future Jordy? Is that what's going to happen to Jordy in the future? Is, he, is his skin going to go all, um, Michael Jackson, and then, uh, he's going to become a, re a creepy recluse? Just staring at the sun and doing weird experiment stuff. And again, see? Perfect. No words needed. You don't need a huge amount of dialogue. You don't need a bunch of stuff. Just... And yes, there is an option after credits to go around to talk to everyone and they tell you how awesome you are, but... I like this. I like this where you're just the first among equals. Like an ancient Anglo-Saxon king or son or some such. You know, it's like... He's like the first among equals. You've all been through the same thing and you all know what's coming and you're all dedicated to the cause now, you know, it's just like, and just seeing all your squad mates and crew there, but still they have no way to get reinforcements, so uh, that to me seems like it should, it should have been the jumping on point for Mass Effect 1. Oh, and keep watching this, uh, I'm not going to comment throughout the whole credits, uh, because there just isn't that much to say other than uh, thank you to everyone who worked on this game. Because I enjoy it. And even thank you to EA for publishing it. As many problems as I have from with EA, and even though I'm boycotting them right now because I believe their, some of their practices are very anti-consumer. And if they don't stop, they, if they're not stopped, they'll... Um, they will, and they become commonplace, they will be... They will you know, lead to another video game crash, but thank you for making this, everybody who worked on it. But one thing is, is it goes silent for the DLC originally, so I put some other music from the game over there. And uh, you might want to fast forward to the end, because at the very end, I've stuck a little fun little scene at the end. All right, there's a fun little scene, you know, sort of uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe thing, nothing you know, that sets up the plot for another movie, thank goodness, unlike that, but it's just a fun little scene, all right? Well, see you in Mass Effect Free. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments, just leave them below. I'll take any, even if they're negative, all right? Thank you. Bye.
Just so you know, I'm running a fever, I've got a nasty cough, and my sinuses are filled with something I can't even describe. And it's...